as you've learned to set your goals and develop a game plan, as you're building your ambition to reach your destination, surely somewhere in your list you wrote down wealth. I'm sure you didn't write down that you wanted to earn enough to just get by. You probably wrote down what you believe that you're capable of earning if you really exercised your potential. Getting the most from your ambition being rewarded by your ambition. Now, I'm not talking about the incredible feelings of accomplishment. I'm talking about the tangible rewards of ambition. How wealthy should you be in knowledge and in spirit? As wealthy as you possibly can be. How rich should you be in dollars and investments? As rich as you possibly can be. Now, I'm not talking greedy. I'm talking reward for success at the service of others, not at the expense of others. Is it okay to strive to become rich and wealthy? Many people struggle with the concept of being rich. Rich people lack morals. Rich people don't care. No, that's not true. Now, some rich people lack morals and don't care, but a lot of poor people have those same traits. So corruption is not inherent with being rich or wealthy. Corruption is evil, but wealth is not evil. Wealth says discover your own talents and use them and take care of them. So your own talents and gifts can take care of you. I firmly believe that it's our natural destiny to grow, to succeed, to prosper and to find happiness. I call it becoming financially independent. That's a little easier than rich or wealthy because some people have this idea that to be wealthy or rich, you've got to throw away values. If being rich bothers you, don't pursue riches. No, the Bible doesn't say you have to be poor. That's just an interpretation, a poor rationalization that lazy people use. People who will give up in the midst of any adversity, people who don't even try. In a nation that's full of hope and promise, it's our heritage and our right and within our reach to realize all the best that exists, including personal wealth. Financial independence is the ability to live from the income of your own personal resources. That I describe as financial independence. What if you decided you had to be rich? to do all the things you wanted to do, go all the places. What if you had to be rich? Are there books on the subject? Yes, of course, there's plenty of information on how to be rich. But if you don't have to be rich, you probably won't read the books. Now, some people don't need much money. I understand that. Some people lead modest lives. But financial independence, that I think is every American's heritage. The ability someday someday to live off the income of your own personal resources. Wow, it's freedom of the most exciting kind, financial independence. Now to get there, I assume that you've got this money thing settled, that it's okay to be rich and wealthy. Success at the service of others, not at the expense of others. Everybody has got to weigh this for themselves. I understand that. But let's say that you'd like to go for becoming financially independent. It's a matter first of philosophy, the philosophy of the rich. Rich people invest their money and spend what's left. The difference in your economic future is going to be your philosophy. Now, I had one lady chastise me severely. She said, Mr. Rohn, you can't promise young people that they can become rich and wealthy. It's just not in the cards these days. It, I said, no, that's not true. She said, it is true. You can't hold out hope to all people who listen to you telling them they can become financially independent. They'll be sadly disillusioned. I said, let me use this illustration. Can you think of a couple right now who makes $5,000 a month? What would they tell you it takes just to keep their head above water and the wolf away from the door? They would probably say all of it. I said, could you think of a couple that makes five and a half thousand a month? 
I said, what would they tell you it takes just to keep their nose above water and the wolf away from the door? They'd say, all of it. I said, now if how do you account for this extra $500? There are errors in judgment on economic philosophy. You say, no, Mr. Roan, it's the economy. No. And if this couple saved this $500, their extra $500 a month invested over the next 15 years would make them financially independent. The difference is not your paycheck. The difference is your philosophy. So now let me teach you some of the best philosophy I know. What to do with a dollar. I tell my kids, here's what you do with it. To begin with, never spend more than 70 cents. I suggest you take 10 cents out of every dollar and give it to charity. Nothing teaches kids character better than generosity. Taking a piece of what you've been blessed with and turning it back to help people who can't help themselves. And the time to start is when the amounts are small and it's easy to give a dime out of a dollar. It's a little tougher to give a hundred thousand out of a million. That's a lot of money. We'd better start you early so you'll be ready when the big stuff comes. So 10 cents for charity. Here's the next 10 cents. 10 cents for active capital. Active capital to try to make a profit. We live in a capitalistic society. So you should turn part of your wages into capital. Buy, sell. It doesn't matter what it is. Try to show a profit. Profits are better than wages. The benefits of living in a capitalistic society. And here's what's exciting about making a profit. You can make a profit long before you can legitimately earn a wage. Your profits can sometimes accelerate much faster than your wages. There are no limits. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. How long will it take to triple your wages currently? A while. But profits? There's no limit. My gosh, once I understood this, I went bonkers. Leave a profit. Make a profit. I talked to a man who rents a lot of apartments. He said, Mr. Own, you wouldn't believe it. Most people, when they leave the apartment, it's trashed. What a reputation. Everything you touch turns to trash, gets dirty. Got to turn that around. A friend of mine has made money on every car he's bought. Why? Because when he traded it in or sold it, it was always better than he found it. The key for parents is to touch a life and leave it better than you found it. Touch a business and leave it better than you found it. Always leave it better than you found it. Make a contribution. Leave a profit. Now here's the third 10 cents. And you can become as wealthy as you want. And the third 10 cents is for passive capital. Passive capital means let somebody else use some of your money. And one of the most valuable things for your future is called compound interest. Nothing more valuable. And I suggest 10 cents for passive capital. Let someone else use it. Pay you interest on it. The borrower is servant to the lender. And if you've taught this properly and ask kids, what do you want to be? Here's what they'll tell you. They'll say, I want to be one of those lenders. If you're interested in power for the future, influence for the future, I'm telling you, the key is to be one of those lenders, not a spender, no, a lender. Now, if you can't start here, here's what you do. Start where you can and work toward it. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to lose weight or to get your health in order or to get your finances in order. Here's the key. Set up the ideal and work toward it.